All right, continuing on here, let's just talk a little bit more about what the normal approximation is really, really is, why we use it, what we should be worried about when we use it, what we should avoid, things like that. So the normal, normal approximation is when we apply the normal distribution to real data that's not actually normal because nothing is perfectly normal. But you need to understand how it works when we apply it, like, well, how that process works, not a ton of the details, but just conceptually what we're doing when we apply that to estimate probabilities. And then you need to understand kind of what the consequences of that can be if we screw up. So what does the normal approximation actually mean? When we say we are using the normal approximation to solve a problem, what it means is that we're using something beautiful, pure, and wonderful that doesn't actually exist in the real world, but we're applying it to something that at least for whatever purposes we have right then is close enough to that beautiful, perf perfect, wonderful thing. So many variables are pretty close to normal, even though they're not perfectly normal. Nothing is perfectly normal in real life. It's a theoretical abstraction. It only exists in like, I don't know, Plato's mind or something, a mathematical space. So we pretend essentially that the real world variables are normal. And then we try and make, make sure we pay attention to how close that really is. So what we're actually pretending, right? It's important when you're playing make-believe to keep one foot in the real world. Uh, and then we calculate probabilities based on the normal distribution, and then we pretend that they apply to our real distribution, our real distribution of data. And we try to make sure that we understand how close those things probably are, or not so close. And this process is called using the normal approximation. We look at our data, say that's pretty much normal, so I'm going to just pretend like it's normal so that I can use all this, these convenient things that we can do if it, if it really is normal. If it were truly normal, we have all these convenient things. Um, it's always approximately accurate. So I'm just going to show you some graphs, kind of trying to get you thinking visually the way I think. I mean, maybe it's not the only way to think about this, about how these things work. So here's right-wing authoritarianism from the Punishment Attitudes data set. It's a questionnaire, and you could get a total score on it. I think that goes from negative 90 or maybe lower up to positive 90. And in the middle, you're not very authoritarian or non-authoritarian. Um, but as you go way up here, you're extremely authoritarian, and down here, you're like anti-authoritarian, right? A bunch of hippies, and these are the people with crew cuts telling you to get in line, mirrored glasses on. So we've drawn here the normal distribution that would exist uh, with a mean that's the same as the mean of this actual data, and a standard deviation that's the same as the standard deviation of this actual data. And I've shaded them in kind of partially so you can see the overlap there. See that the normal distribution doesn't perfectly fit. I would say that this is approximately normal for many purposes, but maybe it's not normal enough for some really specific purposes. So here's a question. What's the probability of somebody in this data set getting a score on the authoritarianism scale of 50 points or higher? Well, I've made that dividing line at 50 points, and that divides either the raw data, the blocky histogram thing, or the normal curve. And we can look at the probabilities in both cases so we can see how close they are. That shaded pink area under the curve is 3.4% of the normal curve. So if you turn that 50 into a z-score, and then you find out what that z-score is, and you look it up in your table, and you find out the area beyond it going up, it's 3.4%. But the area of the actual observations is only 2%, so there's actually less, ob less, uh, observ less, <laughs> less observations, less area, less total um, area, fewer total observations. I can't talk. Anyway, they don't match. They never match perfectly, and so we just have to ask ourselves, is that important to us? So these areas do not perfectly match, and so that's showing you that the normal, observ normal approximation for this data set is not perfect. And the imperfection, well, you could say it's uh, it's kind of substantial. If you start from saying 2% versus 3.4%, you're probably going up like 50%, almost 50% from the value of 2%. Oh, but in total percentage points, you're only going up 1.4%. But sometimes that makes a big difference. You have to wonder, you have to ask yourself, how important is that mismatch in this particular situation? So religious fundamentalism from the same data set, you'll notice that the data is not as normal. Look at that big gap there that doesn't fit, and that stuff sticking out there, and that stuff sticking out there. That's pretty bad. But it is pointy in the middle, and maybe some people would say, let's just use the normal approximation anyway. So this is a religious fundamentalism score you can get, and it's similar to the right-wing authoritarianism scale developed by the same people even. So 
what percentage of participants score 20 or lower? Now let's figure out that probability if we use the normal approximation or the probability in the real data. You can see it's going to be kind of a problem because of that bunch of stuff sticking out there. There were a lot of people in the real data who got in this range, but in the normal distribution it said there shouldn't have been so many people. So there's 27.6% of the area of the normal curve is found to the left of this cutoff of 20. However, in our real data, if you just count the number of people who got a score lower than 20, or sorry, 20 or lower, you find that it's 30% of observations. That's kind of a big difference. That's uh, two and a half percentage points there. But maybe that doesn't matter to some people. Maybe sometimes that's good enough for you, but maybe sometimes it's very much not. So you have to really think what matters in your data set. Here's another one. Treatment professional ages from that same data set. Treatment professionals in the data set, their ages were symmetrical kind of, but you can see they're negatively skewed here. So not enough the normal curve says there should be a bunch of people here in this range, just a little below the mean, but that's too many. In the real data, there weren't that many. The normal curve said there shouldn't be so many people in this range, but actually there's more here, the, the blue bar is sticking out. So let's see how close they match for a specific question. What's the probability of a person being 50 or older? The normal approximation says the probability is 53% because 53% of the area under the normal curve is to the right of this dividing line at 50, which actually isn't on the axis. The computer made its own decisions. So the normal approximation, if we used only that, our answer would be 53% are over than that. But in fact, there's far more than that. There's almost 60%. So it's about 7% of the entire data set off. Sometimes that's a big deal. I, I wouldn't want to trust this. This is a big deal. There were a lot more older people than the normal approximation suggested that there were. And here's back to the undergrads from the same data set. Now we're looking at their ages. Their ages are horribly not normal. So this is an example of what happens when you have a really not normal distribution. We can ask the probabilities of ages of undergrads. What's the percentage of them who are under 20? We have to split this bar here uh, because there isn't a bar specifically for 20, although I could have maybe tried harder in making the graph. But you can see that uh, almost 40% of the area under the normal curve should be below 20 here, right? So 38.9%, 39% more or less. However, two-thirds, so less than half, a little more than one-third, less than half, is what the normal curve says to be lower than, should be less than 20 years old. But because it's so horribly skewed, in reality, it was over two-thirds of the actual observations. Two-thirds of the participants were... Uh, 20, were under 20 years old, 19 or, or younger. So when you have skewed data, the normal distribution gives you very wrong answers. And the more skewed your data are like this, it's just terrible, the more wrong the normal, normal distribution is. So these are some examples of using the normal approximation and when we should not use the normal approximation. Uh, sorry, I'm going to adjust a little quick thing here. So here's um, offender ages. So in this punishment attitudes data, it was a survey study where I emailed a whole bunch of people, a few hundred people, these vignettes as part of a, a paper and pencil survey they got in the mail. And a vignette is like a little short story you use. And in research, it usually just means a little blurb. So this vignette was, you know, there's this offender who, there's this boy who has assaulted this young girl. And I wanted, I sent out exactly the same number of vignettes at every age. I had 26 different ages. I had seven and eight and nine and 10 and 11 and 12 years old, right? So I divided up my like 1,000, 1,500, I don't remember how many it was, surveys. And there were exactly the same number of seven-year-old vignettes as eight-year-olds. But what I got back wasn't exactly like that. What I got back looks like this blue line here. These were the ages that I actually received in the mail. So uh, it's the hypothetical offender ages in the vignettes. So we could say, what's the probability that if you were in my study, you got an event offender who was 22 years old or older? Not a real offender, just somebody in the story. Well, normal distribution says that it should be 20.1%. Um, so my graphing software for the function I wrote doesn't really show you the whole thing, but you can get the idea. This area from here on out to infinity is 21 or 20.1%. However, um, Actually, 28% almost of actual observations had that. The problem is here that this is almost a uniform distribution. This is almost a flat line. That's very not normal. It's not really skewed, 
But that's not the only way you can be non-normal. You can be non-normal in a lot of ways. Normal is a really specific shape. If you're not that specific shape as a distribution, then you're not normal. This is not a normal distribution at all. It's not skewed, really. There's not much skew in it. But it's not normal because it has these big chunky corners that go way out here. And so the area in the tails of the normal distribution, the normal distribution will always overestimate what should be in the middle and underestimate what will be in the outside, as we've seen here. So that's a bad normal approximation in general. So why do we use this? Why don't we just look at the data and count what's there? In fact, we should do that. If you can ever do that, just do it. Don't ever use the normal approximation when you can use the real, the real data. So don't ever use any approximation when you've got the actual hard data in front of you. You should just never do that. Why do we do that laziness? Every once in a while you find somebody doing this, but that's actually not very common. It's a terrible reason. Uh, there are some times that we use this because using the normal distribution makes what we do fit very nicely with more complicated inferential stats processes. And that's actually a, a pretty common thing we do. Sometimes it's a fairly dangerous thing to do and we need to be extra careful to check, and make sure that things are fairly normal and how non-normal they are and how bad that is. Um, and sometimes, very commonly, we don't have access to all the data, but we can figure out or estimate the mean and the standard deviation. And sometimes we're making up the data. This seems crazy, but uh, sometimes we make up a null hypothesis and we say, if the null hypothesis is true, this should be the mean of such and such. But once you've got the mean, you need to specify everything or else you're not going to be able to calculate a p-value. So we specify the mean and the standard deviation, which hopefully we estimate from something reasonable instead of just making that totally up. But we imagine this null hypothesis distribution and we can't measure things from it because it kind of doesn't exist. It's hypothetical. So that happens quite a lot when we don't have access to all the data. It's actually pretty common. So normal approximation, we should use it when the, or at least it's okay to use it. It's not like you should. It's okay if the variable is pretty close to normal or if being a little bit wrong is okay or if you have absolutely no choice. However, sometimes you should do nothing. Or actually, there's a lot of options when you get into some more advanced stats. You should generally not use it when you have no choice if there's any hint that you're going to really screw things up by using the approximation. And it's kind of hard sometimes to know how screwed up you are. So this leads to a basic principle. Being wrong is the next best thing to being right. In stats, you are always wrong. Um, and if you're wrong intelligently, you can still do some very useful things. You can still discover some meaningful things about the world. You can make some good decisions. So just being wrong isn't a yes, no thing. So there's more wrong and there's less wrong and there's wrong for good reasons and wrong for bad reasons. And so being wrong is okay. It's the next best thing to being right. So the normal approximation should never be used uh, if the variable is not nearly normal and if being wrong matters a lot. But sometimes if it's not nearly normal, uh, and we just want such a rough approximation that being wrong doesn't matter very much, I mean, we might bend this rule because it depends on the situation. If being a little bit wrong even is not okay, then don't do this. Don't use the normal approximation. And if you don't even know whether the variable is normally distributed, most of the time you should not use the normal distribution or the normal approximation. So an awful lot of stats is approximation. That's not the same thing as just guessing, by the way. It's a very different thing. When we approximate, you always have to take this extra step to try and figure out the accuracy of your approximation. And we're going to use confidence intervals and maybe some other things to try and uh, cover that step. But we approximate and we try to figure out how good or bad our approximation is. Uh, or estimate how bad it is. We often don't know exactly how bad it is. And if we knew exactly how bad it was, maybe we wouldn't need to approximate if we knew exact things. And we try to make an informed cost-benefit decision, which leads to another principle, two in one lecture. When you're wrong, know how wrong you are and know how much it matters. That will help you make good decisions. So just knowing you're wrong, that doesn't make decisions for you. You need to know how wrong you are as much as you can. And you need to know how much it matters if you're a certain amount wrong, a little wrong or a lot wrong. And if possible, if you're wrong this way or in this other direction. So later, we're going to talk about the central limit theorem which magically makes non-normal distributions into normal ones. And that will help us make use the normal distribution in situations where you might not think it was possible. So you have a distribution that you're thinking, that's not nearly normal. Well, if you're doing the kinds of processes that involve the central limit theorem, then it kind of becomes normal.